Hello, it's Christy Marcotte. I love using quilt dies to make cards, especially with the final scraps of a 6x6 paper pad. Recently, I've had several requests to show how I use the scraps with the quilt die. I'm using the quilt cover-up die from MFT. I already cut out the frame. The paper pad is the graduates from Doodlebug Design. I usually only need a couple graduation cards each year, so I haven't finished this paper pad yet. But there are plenty of small paper scraps, perfect for a quilt card. I'm going to show the cutting process of all the quilt pieces using my Sizzix Big Kick die machine. With the MFT dies, I've never needed to use any shims, and I just use the regular plates required for thin dies. With this specific quilt die, it's important to note that there are four different size pieces. I want to make sure to cut the right pieces while I build my quilt. I also will pay attention to paper designs that are directional. I don't want the owls to be upside down on the card, but with other patterns like stripes or stars, it doesn't really matter. Of course, this is definitely each crafter's preference. I have made quilt cards where the designs aren't always right side up, and it's still a fun card. I find that the easiest way to see what pieces I'm cutting is to lay the die facing up while I run it through the machine. The paper scraps generally stay in place, but another option is to tape them to the die using a small piece of washi tape. Of course, there will be lots of tiny tape pieces to remove from the die and the paper. After I cut a few pieces, I start to build my quilt. I find it is helpful to lay out the pieces on a piece of paper or my craft table. That way I can easily see what pieces are still needed. Remember, you will be cutting the pieces in reverse. I use a craft pick or paper piercer to help remove the die cut pieces from the metal die. I've probably used this quilt die hundreds of times, so the paper really gets stuck in mine. Every once in a while, I'll use a piece of wax paper with the pattern paper. It helps when removing the pieces. If your dies aren't cutting evenly, it can be helpful to rotate the die 45 degrees and then run it through the machine again. My main focus is to start with the star pieces since they are larger. I need four of each of the two sizes. I will also cut out some of the triangles while cutting the star pieces. For this die, the triangles are all interchangeable, which is really nice since not all quilt dies are like that. As I select papers, I try to mix up the patterns and colors to give the quilt a balanced look. That's not always easy to do when using only scraps, but I do my best. I'm pretty sure the quilt card recipients won't ever notice if I put two of the same papers or colors together. They are just enjoying the lovely quilt card they received. The MFT die even has faux stitching on each individual piece, giving the card the look of a real fabric quilt. I've been told many times that the quilt cards are their favorite. Even one of the charities where I donate cards every month has started requesting more quilt cards, which is fine since I enjoy making them. I'm going to continue cutting quilt pieces and do my best not to cut the wrong ones. It's amazing how many quilt cards can be made using only the small leftover scraps from a 6x6 paper pad. I just love the look of including so many fun patterns on one card. Even if there aren't quite enough scraps, another option is to include some solid cardstock. Quilters use solid colored fabrics on their quilts all the time. My mother has been quilting for many years, and her quilts are just beautiful. My whole family is so blessed to each own one of her quilts, and she has received quite a few quilt cards from myself. Cutting all the die pieces can take a while, especially cutting only one or two papers at a time. I'm going to speed up the rest of the cutting and then show how I assemble the card.
quilt pieces are all cut out and I kept them loosely assembled on my craft table. I find it just makes it easier when putting the pieces into the quilt frame. My favorite way to assemble any cover-up die is to adhere score tape to the back side of the cutout frame. For the quilt die, I'm using three strips of one inch tape and one strip of half inch tape. You could use other adhesives, but I really like the inlaid die look. And by using score tape, I don't need to use any liquid glue on the thin frame. I definitely don't enjoy messing with liquid glue and such a delicate design. After the score tape is attached, I flip the frame over and start adding the quilt pieces. This is why it's handy to have the quilt loosely assembled. It makes it easy to place the pieces in the correct spot. Score tape is super sticky, so be sure it's in the right spot. Once in place, the pieces can't be easily removed. It's kind of like assembling a jigsaw puzzle, only you already know where all the pieces go. The quilt square is 4 inches by 4 inches in size. I'm adhering it to a piece of white cardstock that is 4 and 1 eighth by 5 and 3 eighths inches. I already stamped the sentiment. I love using matted layers, so I'm using some black cardstock to add contrast. The card base is A2 size, 4 and a quarter inch by 5 and a half inches. I always use a nice heavyweight paper for my card bases. For a final finishing touch, I cut out a small stitch circle from Lawn Fawn to add to the center of the quilt. I hope my tutorial has been helpful, so now you can turn those paper scraps into beautiful quilt cards. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.